much of this. It really is not even a 9 to 5 job, I have to mention. The media is certainly not a 9 to 5 job. It's a job that um, whenever sort of uh, it requires your presence, you actually require to be there. And uh, I was on the morning show for about uh, good 20 years. With me up, I got the second hours in the morning about 5 o'clock. Uh, at about 5 o'clock in the morning, and during the fact that you wasn't going to be at work before that, uh, before the show started. So, uh, I mean, we're radio people. We don't basically sit in front and talk to people. We just, you know, talk to people who we can't see. That's what we actually do. But uh, this is something very interesting. I've actually done uh, this piece kind of just chats like this before, just to let you know as to where the radio industry is today um, and where it has been actually evolving for the last so many years or so. Uh, the first uh, part of the radio station actually launched in 1993. And, uh, Today, in a population of about 22 million, we have almost 75% of the population actually have access to radio. It could be radio at home, it could be radio on the phone, it could be radio on the website, uh, whatever it is. They have access to radio. Um, out of this, that, 30 million people listen to radio on a constant basis, right? Um, can you tell me how many you feel actually <coughs> listen to English radio out of that 13 million? Okay. To give you, right? 13 million actually listen to radio. English radio listen to in this country by just 300,000. <laughs> right? I'm not surprised that you're saying one million and seven million or stuff because it looks big, right? But the funny thing is, it's that three hundred thousand that bring in the most amount of yield in terms of revenue that comes in for radio. Almost fifty percent of the revenue that comes into radio actually is dominated by that three hundred thousand, purely because of the fact that that 300,000 or proportion of that 300,000 are the decision makers. Are the, guys who are, are the guys and the ladies who are actually sitting on the top of that particular corporate who decide where the money should go. You know? So because of that, that is one of the main reasons I believe that English radio is surviving. Okay? In my honest opinion, English radio is basically declining in this country. If I can basically see a show of hands, how many of you actually listen to radio five hours a day? Exactly my point, right? How many of you listen to radio just an hour a day? How many of you listen to radio while driving? This is, this is the problem. This is the problem that the English radio has actually got to. Because gone are the days, right, where back in 93 and 95, when, we, when I actually got into radio in 95, radio was actually switched on at every given point. Because it was new, it was the fad, you needed to know what, what was going on, you needed to know what the music was on. And uh, once you got into work, you need to basically switch on the radio. When you're at home, the radio is actually switched on at any given time, right? Now what is happening is the fact that radio is only switched on by your driving. Okay? The four key pillars as far as radio is concerned. Now today I'm basically, I'm, I'm, I'm only talking about English radio. Okay? I'm not talking about a single radio, I'm not talking about Tamil radio. Because single radio, you know, single radio is unique because we're the only country that speaks single. So it will always actually be right up there. Right? Tamil radio also because we have a massive Tamil speaking population in this country. Right? It will always be there. It will always actually evolve. Now as far as English radio is concerned, English radio needs to seriously rethink its strategy. Right? Some of the big stations right now are actually sitting on their laurels. Right? I was sitting on board till 2015 and I was explaining this to them. Right? Even at that time 
I could see the trend, I could see the, 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 the listenership actually going down. But, you know, unfortunately, when you're very comfortable in a situation, you don't want to change things around, you know. And sadly, sometimes stations are actually run by people, or sadly, stations are actually held on to by people who do not like change. I mean, it's, it's, it's a human thing, you don't necessarily like change, but you need to evolve. And radio, and especially broadcast medium, is something that constantly evolves. The four key pillars, as far as radio is concerned, is very simple, right? It's music, it's companionship, it's entertainment, and it's information, right? The radio station, or the radio industry, the broadcast industry, actually stands on those four pillars. Now what is happening, right? This generation we're talking about, okay? What is happening is the fact that you don't need the guy on the radio to tell you this is a good song. You don't need the guy on the radio to introduce a new song. Because you now have access to so many different ways for you to listen to music. You've got YouTube whenever you want. You've got MP3 players, you've got the Apple iPods, whatever it is, you've got the, you know, uh, you've got iTunes whenever you want. So you have, you have music at your fingertips whenever you actually want to. So you don't necessarily need radio anymore, right? This is for English radio again, okay? So, again, you take music out. Then you are left with information, entertainment, and companionship. Information, again, is at your fingertips. You don't need the guy to tell you what's going on. You don't need the guy on the radio to tell you that today is going to be a day that you're going to expect thunder showers. No. Right? It's at your fingertips. You can get it whenever you want. Right? <coughs> entertainment. How does the guy on the radio know what entertains you? Because each of you are different. Each of you obviously like different things that obviously entertain. Some people like, you know, business news in the morning because it's sort of entertaining them. Some people like jokes in the morning, some people like comedy, morning, evening, whatever. So again, entertainment is important. Now out of the three pillars you've actually taken three pillars out of the four pillars, you've actually taken three pillars out. And you're left with companionship. That is the reason that you listen to radio while you're driving. Because you need a companion. You need something to basically talk to you. If you're driving alone, you need something to talk to you. If you're driving with somebody, you know, apart from you, unless you've got a really chatty friend who just doesn't shut up, right? <laughs> right? You have occasions where you obviously, right? I see there's a chatty friend there in that case. <laughs> unless there is a friend, obviously, like I said, who just doesn't shut up. There are occasions where you keep quiet. But that's the time you actually listen to the radio, right? So it boils down to companionship. So your companionship is only required when you're driving. You don't need a companion when you go home. You don't need a companion when you go to work. You don't need a companion anywhere else apart from radio, apart from when you're driving as a matter of fact. So that is a huge problem that English radio is actually facing today. That is a problem that English radio needs to start looking very carefully, right? They're not necessarily looking carefully because the yield that the amount of money is coming in by people who are sitting at the top of different boards and different corporates and conglomerates who are giving the amount of money. Now those are the guys who are actually driving, right? How long are they going to be driving this industry? Sooner or later, you guys are going to be sitting on top of boards. You are going to be sitting on top of industries, you are going to be making the decision. If right now you're not even listening to radio apart from driving, what makes you think that you are going to decide to put money on English radio? Right? It's a serious problem, right? So, this is, this actually has been coming along for a long time, um, because social media has taken over completely, right? Social media spend in this country is actually increasing quite a lot, right, almost every year. So I don't know exact numbers, but one of the biggest spenders in social media in this country is Unilever, right? And their budgets are phenomenal. Their budgets are exceeding like 300 to 400 million annually on social media alone, right? Yes, radio is still making money, Right? Yes, radio, obviously there is a certain amount of money that's actually coming in. But now what has happened is the fact that the companies have 
also accepted that social media is going to play a massive role. Now, with the increase of social media, it has started eating into revenues of print media. Right? Print is so dead. It is, I don't know, there are people who are trying to come up with a new newspaper, a few more newspapers, right? How many of you read newspapers a day? One, two, three, four, right? Is it in the morning? Uh, no, usually it's Saturday since. That's it. Yeah. Okay, that was sort of my next question, right? How often do you read newspapers? Seven days a week? Every day? Okay. Five days a week? Once a week? Excuse me. I once a week. This is, I just read the newspapers on Sundays because there's absolutely nothing to do on a Sunday. <laughs> right? And because you're so used to waking up in the morning, right? Taking your Sunday times out, having a cup of tea, and just reading absolute garbage on the newspaper because, and the thing is this, how many of you do this? You read the newspaper from the first page to the last page, you turn it and say there is nothing in the newspaper because there's really nothing in the newspaper. I mean, have you ever read a newspaper article that you have read or have found out for the first time by reading the newspaper? Because newspapers is really yesterday's news. And today, when you obviously have access to information, when it happens, whenever you want to, right, it becomes a serious issue. Right? That, sadly, is where English radio in this country is actually going to. Because the problem right now is the fact that we lead such busy lives. We don't have that time to spend listening on English radio. Right? Terrestrial TV and terrestrial radio will always survive in a country where the unemployment level is high. It is a given, right? Um, case in point is India, right? They've got a billion channels in India, right? And every single channel has some sort of rating, right? Because there are like a billion people in India, maybe two billion right now, right? But out of that, the number of people who actually still access TV and radio at any given time is just a phenomenon, right? So, because that they know that there are people who are just going to hang around and are going to do anything, there's always money actually dumped into radio and into TV, right? But even in India, things are changing slowly, right? Because social media, again, is taking over in a massive manner, right? So. The thing here is the fact that radio, English radio especially, needs to find out where you are going to strike that balance with social media, <coughs> right? When social media came out, radio fought social media. They said, no, it's not going to work, it's this, it's that. So social media just kept quiet and started eating into everybody's revenue. Right? Because there are so many things that you can actually do with social media that you can't do with terrestrial radio. You can geotag with social media. You can basically put an ad and and you know target the segment you want the ad to be seen. Right? You can't do that with radio. You can't do that with terrestrial TV either. Right? So those days, it was it's still called traditional media. Radio, TV, and print is still called traditional media. Why? Because it's just a tradition that you need to put money in. Even today, agencies in, in the media planners at certain agencies, right? It's a tradition. Okay? I have one million rupees from a client who wants to basically advertise. So it's the media agency that actually decides how that one million is sorted out. But it's just, you know, all of that one million X amount will go to social media, and then it's a tradition to put on radio. It's a tradition to put on TV. Because we just want to. Does that give you anything? No, I don't know. I'm, I'm dumping 500,000 rupees in radio. How the hell do you know someone heard your commercial? No, someone will tell me. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way you should. This is the traditional mindset that was there 10 years ago. It's fine 10 years ago because we didn't have the amount of technology that we have now. Those days, I mean, TV advertising is so expensive today. It is so expensive. 
right? Making a TV commercial will cost you nothing less than about one and a half to two million rupees. One commercial. How long does that commercial go on for? 30 seconds. How many people remember that commercial? Only the guys in the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else remembers. I mean, how many people obviously remember TV commercials today? Why? Because every time a TV commercial comes on, you switch the channel. Right? I do. I do it. It's the same thing. We all do it. Right? Every time commercials start raised uh, on, on radio, you switch the channel. Because they're not listening to the radio for you to basically tell someone that you should buy this. I will decide if I want to buy it. Right? But now, that whole idea of trying to convince you to buy on radio, especially for the English market, is going down. The clients and the agencies and the corporates have decided that, oh no, there is something going on. These guys are not buying in respect to the fact that I have X who is endorsing my product. I have Y who is endorsing my product. They are not buying it. Why? Because you can make your own decision right now. Right? You don't need someone to tell you this is a great phone. You need to get a hold of it. Right? And this is the best phone in town because you would most probably speak to your best friend. And if your best friend says this is a good phone, the chances are you would actually buy it. And you have the access to get online, you have the access to find out what the specs are on the phone, you know exactly what you need on the phone, you know how much it is on the phone, on, uh, as far as the phone is concerned. That is basically the decision that you are going to make because information is available for you. Right? So these are some serious issues that radio is actually facing right now. You know? But this is not going to, this, I, like I said, this is predominantly on English radio because I am from the English radio industry, right? So now I have decided to take away myself from the corporate radio structure for the last three years or so. I'm just working as a consultant. I'm working as a consultant to a radio station that is predominantly youth. And I'm also working as a, ra a consultant for a radio station that is pre predominantly old, right? <coughs> Poles apart completely two different target demographics, right? I still don't understand radio stations that say that we are catering to the young people. Young people don't listen to radio. They don't listen to radio. I've got two teenage boys, right? They don't listen to radio. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even care who the hell I am. <laughs> they don't listen to radio, right? I used to do the show in the morning. I used to go to uh, go to school in the morning. They used to switch the radio on. They should turn the radio off. <laughs> I know that, right? I know that they don't listen to the radio because, but they will come and tell me what the new song is. They will come and tell me what the new songs are. Right? The other day they were telling me what the Skiki challenge is. I don't know what the Skiki challenge is. It's ridiculous. This is a very stupid challenge. Right? But they're so highly. You know, there's a way to take it up with this. <laughs> so, see, who spoke about the Kiki Challenge? Right? It's on the internet. Right? Today, information is available for you whenever you want. Even music is available for you whenever you want. So now, radio is holding on to this companionship. I am your companion, you have to listen to me. Right? And everybody's like, okay, we'll listen to you only when we want to. And when we want to is when you basically are driving, that's the only time we need someone to talk to. Right? Apart from that, the moment, see, also your mindset changes completely when you get into the car, right? And when you get out of the car. It's like you're a completely different person, right? To come, unless you're like stuck in a traffic jam or you're basically, you know, you guys are very close to with all these protests that happen all the time. So every time you basically get on the, on the road and, and that's, that's, your, that's your mind process, right? Again. Reaching out to individuals who are obviously listening to radio is all psychology. It's not really just putting out a song and thinking, hoping and praying that people will listen to you and it's a great song and all that stuff. It really is psychology. There's a lot of science that really goes into deciding what type of music that should be played in the morning, what type of music that should be played in the afternoon and evening and so on and so forth. Right? And uh, I mean, there are softwares today that have been developed right, that could actually push out certain songs that we feel is good for a hot day, we feel it's good for a gloomy day, we feel it's good for a rainy day, right? So even within that, it's actually moved leaps and bounds, right? But what English radio needs to do, 
is the fact that you need to find that equilibrium between social media and radio. So you're looking at an equilibrium between digital and terrestrial. Right? It's not going to be easy at all. It's really not going to be easy because, again, like I said, the time spent listening honestly is about 20 minutes. For an average person, it's about 20 minutes. And you listen to the radio. Right? Gone are the days where you actually remembered what the guy on the radio told you. Now, if you listen to the radio today or yesterday or last evening, eight out of ten times you wouldn't remember what was actually on the radio. You wouldn't, you wouldn't remember what the guy on the radio told you. Because it does not matter to you anymore. That's the thing. So that's where radio needs to, English radio needs to seriously buckle up. They need to decide, we are losing people. But they are, in my opinion, still very stubborn, right, to identify that they're losing people because we go back to that 300,000, <laughs> right, who is giving radio more than 50% of the revenue that is coming for the industry. But because of the 50%, because of the yield is so high, they are refusing to change what else is going to go on beyond at the moment. Now, when the guy who's sitting right on top in companies and boards and conglomerates is not going to sit on top forever, it's people like you <coughs> who actually start going to sit on top there. So that change is actually happening right now. But if the stations and if the broadcast industry doesn't identify those changes now, I'm sorry to say English radio is going to be dead in this country. It's pretty sad because it had a great run. But then you're taking out the pillars. Already the pillars have been taken out, right? Down the line, I mean, listen, you've got, you've got, you've got super smart speakers that actually talk back to you, right? There is your companion. So you don't need a guy to basically speak to you anymore. Right? See, companions are even actually coming at your fingertips now. So that is a serious issue that this country is actually facing, especially with English radio. But they won't tell you. They won't tell you. Right? But it is something that, you know, it will slowly start to creep in before you know it. Things will change. I mean, I know for a fact that in Malaysia, um, there is, I can't remember the holding company, there is this company that actually holds on to close to about 10 to 12 radio stations. They own 10 to 12 radio stations there. Uh, they started closing down terrestrial stations and they converted into digital. And digital basically for them is taking off because the younger generation is always online. You want to reach out to them if they're always online. Right? They've started coming up with you know, different avenues and attributes to obviously reach out to you. Once you like the website's page, once you like the radio station's page on Facebook, there are software that will send you text messages like five minutes before your favorite song is being played. Right? You don't have to run looking for a radio. Right? It's all on your phone. You know? So, they're using social media to get closer and closer to the radio listeners. That is what this country needs to obviously do. Because things are just not working out for English radio. Right? It's still looking good in terms of, you know, it sounds great and things are looking, um, sounds good, makes people obviously are thinking it's like a big deal. Right? So behind the scenes, it's quite different. So the reason I'm telling you this is because this is a great platform for people like you, just in case you would like to get into the broadcast industry. It's a great platform for you to start thinking out of the box. You know? Mark my words, radio and TV will never die. It will never die. Because we need that all the time. But it will evolve. It will evolve. I mean, for example, 
I don't know how many of you used to rent videotapes. I feel so old in this room. <laughs> right? How many of you rented VHS tapes? Okay. Right. So that's four. Right? People don't even know what VHS is. <laughs> right? We used to rent VHS tapes. Okay? So you used to go down, there's so many different video parlors, that's what they were called. You used to go down, right, and you used to rent tapes. So you used to bring it back home and you used to watch the movie. Then it moved on to DVDs. Sorry, it moved on to CDs. Then it moved on to laser discs. Gosh, carrying those laser discs was a mess. It's so massive, right? Then it moved on to DVDs. Where you used to either, you know, I don't think people even rented DVDs. There was a very small fraction that actually rented DVDs, but you went and bought DVDs because they're so cheap. Right? 150, 200, whatever it was. What do you do now? Download Netflix. Netflix is taken over. Netflix is giving you what we had 15 years ago to rent out movies. So it's giving you a monthly subscription or an annual subscription. You watch any amount of movies, any TV series. You don't have to go to the video parlor and the guy says, I'm sorry, I don't have that movie. It's always there. Right? That's like a biggest problem. Right? And because when a new movie comes out, it's like a massive waiting list for it to go for it. Right? Now, that's, that's called evolving. That's evolving. That's the process that movie has actually taken over. You've got Netflix, you've got Hulu, you have so many things. You just have to be, uh, you just have to be a member, and a member is what eleven dollars, twelve dollars a month, which is really nothing. But it's for unlimited movies. The telcos love it because you're using their streaming um, uh, data, so they're like really pushing Netflix. You, know, you guys just watch as much as you want <laughs> because you are going to pay us at the end of the day anyway, right? So it's quite evolving, right? When you, we're, si we're still sitting in this little cocoon of ours, right? English radio is still sitting in this cocoon of ours. The reason I'm actually saying and emphasizing English radio is because in, at least we have, English radio has benchmarks in other countries that we can follow, right? Tamil radio, yes, to a certain extent in India. <coughs> but Singhal radio, they don't necessarily have benchmarks. They will, it's, it's unique to us. It doesn't matter what they do, people will still listen to them. Because they are not getting exposed to the rest of the world. That is the serious problem that we're actually having. So the, the, the reason I'm actually telling you this is because I believe radio actually has had its heydays. Now it's slowly petering down. We need people who are getting into the broadcast industry right now to change it around, purely because of generation like you, who have a lot of access to information, who are pretty much online all the time, right? You come up with out-of-the-box ideas to see how radio, like terrestrial and digital, can start merging. People have obviously started doing that, hence, you know, web radios have taken over. Again, it is still boiling down to listening to music, it's still boiling down to listening to talent. So now, again, another school of thought that is actually coming on board is curated audio that is available for you online. Because the time spent listening is really 20 minutes or so. What if someone actually boxes the audio that you want to listen to in a matter of 15 to 20 minutes, land it up online, you get to access it whenever you want to, you can pause, you can play, you can come back, you can listen to it whenever you want to. But you still are uh, obviously using it when you want. So it's, there's nobody forcing you to listen to it. It's about podcasts. And that's taking over. That is taking over. And a podcast is something where anybody can actually start a radio station. Anybody from anywhere can start a radio station and you can start building your community and your followers overnight. That is what I am looking into in a big way. So those are plans that we have in terms of actually getting things going.
and uh, where you get to listen to whatever material that you want to, when you want to, and all it, come back, listen to it again, send it to somebody, did you hear it? Because more often than not, when you listen to radio, your friends are not listening to it at the same time. Even if you end up talking about it, then you can't, you know, recall the thing. So, they are taking over around the world, but we are still sitting in a little cocoon in this country, yeah. not knowing what to do because we are so very happy with the amount of money that's actually coming. Yeah? So that's where we are right now. You know? Radio needs to evolve. TV is evolved. TV is obviously moving on. Radio needs to evolve. How is it going to evolve? Right? It's when you start accepting that digital is the way forward. And then you will look at certain places where digital can actually help you as a terrestrial radio station, where you need to move into that digital sphere. Because digital is here to stay. That's it. No one's going to waste it. You, think. you know, 10 years down the line, there will be something even more. You know, superior to what digital is today, you never know. But any industry, it doesn't matter, broadcast industry, even if it's manufacturing industry, you need to be open to evolve. That's the most important thing. You know, um, I think a good case study, maybe, I think everybody knows MAS, right? MAS. They basically started off as pretty much an exclusive care shop. That's what they were, right? So I'm just talking about this whole evolving bit, how they have actually evolved right now. They pretty much basically took all and it sort of moved on to, you know, going back and, you know, getting these things sorted out. Then they realized that this is not necessarily going the way that they want to. So then they started to have their own design studio here. Now you've got their two key clients, is Victoria's Secret and Nike, who are the biggest clients. Right? So over a period of years, once both the clients have sort of accepted them as a crucial partner in this industry, they went forward and said, listen, we'd like to actually design Victoria's Secret. We'd like to design Nike. And initially they were just very apprehensive about the whole thing, but then they gave them a shot. It came out really well, and it's our own people who are actually designing Nike products right now, and Victoria's Secret's product. Mm -hmm. So they've evolved to be a normal tailor shop, to actually designing it, producing it, marketing it and then shipping it back to the US and all these people. It doesn't matter what industry you really are in. You know, it's you need to be sort of open to evolving. Evolving doesn't mean that you're sort of, you know, changing your whole, you know, your, your core uh, elements of what your business is built on. Right? It's trying to expand yourself and where you can approach more people and right now people are actually moving away so much, right? That's where the core comes into play. How are you going to start attracting them and start basically targeting that one person that you want all the time? That's something that you guys really need to have to think about. So, yeah, that, that's basically it. Any questions?
that's unfortunate the situation is become because you know the government at one point started giving out licenses like it basically started giving out driving licenses right um, even today i can tell you there are few people who are holding out a radio licenses but they 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 can't start because the spectrum is so saturated right that when you auto tune on your on your radio right you just trip and fall to another radio station you know every single second it's so bad it is so bad right and it's wrong because the way obviously the the, the modulation of the spectrum is so wrong right because you actually have to give yourself a good bandwidth of about 300 megahertz now you have something on 90 and you have something on 90.2 <coughs> you know and then there have been so many instances you're driving down or you listen to an english radio station and suddenly there's a singing song playing <laughs> I mean, come on. These are things that people they know about it, but they're just too stubborn to change it. So, going back to your question, in how do you sort out this competition? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you can actually sort out this competition because everybody is actually fighting for that, you know, tiny slice of the pie all the time. That's where actually in 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 radio the rating system comes into play, which I don't believe the rating system, right? Um, how many of you actually have <coughs> taken part in a radio survey? I'm not surprised. But supposedly there are thousands of people who have actually taken part. That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I'm there to see any one of them. Um, and we have some of the like the most archaic survey system that goes on. Right? It's a it's a bloody diary method. Okay, so it's ridiculous. I mean, I've had this argument with LMRB from the time I've been in radio. I don't think they like me anymore, right? <laughs> so because I'm questioning them, so how the hell are you doing this? And it's like for them, they go, they select a group of people, right? And I think in English radio is just 300, right? 300 people decide if you're a number one station or not for this month, right? So they go ahead and they start dishing out diaries for these certain 300 people, and they tell them, "Okay, please note down what type of what radio station you are listening to every single day, right?" So who the hell has a time for that? Right? <laughs> you know, I sit and write down, "I listen to Sun," "I listen to Yes," "I listen to you. nobody," right? But then end of the month, they actually come by, they knock on your door, and then somebody you basically find out who it is. It's a guy from LMRB, and then you take the the this thing, and you start filling up so fast. Right, you fill up what's on your top of the mind at that point. You fill up on the radio that is actually that you're listening to, or you listen to, or you remember. Right, and then that evolves into some sort of data, and then they decide, and you know, so much so right now, none of the Maharaja companies are actually part of LMRB. Right, they are not part of LMRB because they are questioning them on terms of their rating system. So they said, "Listen, there's no point. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a decision they've taken. So there's no point us accepting or rejecting it, being a part of it, right? So we're going out, right? And there are conglomerates and multinationals who actually rely on this rating system to decide how much money they want to spend with you. If you are a number one station, you obviously get more of the pie." Right, if you're a number two station, you get a bit less. So, what they have also done is basically they have actually now there are certain companies. For example, Fonterra is one who does that. Unilever is another one who does that. Um, you've got quite a few multinationals who actually decide because they have to answer to their board and so on and justify why did you spend so much on this station? They're number ten. You know, it, they have to they have to have data to prove it. So. Maharajas obviously have distanced themselves out of Elamarbi. If you ever see an Elamarbi sort of rating, which is what the guys actually go by, there none of their stations are part of it. So they are like, listen, we know that we're doing well, right? If you think the station is doing well for you, and if we are the right station for your target audience, you spend money with us. If not, you're perfectly fine. And I mean, they've been in the industry for. Many years to actually do that, but then the smaller radio stations can't do that. You know, so competition is fierce. Competition is fierce. Competition is again. Uh, 
it's the PR that you have with your client, with your with the advertising agency. Like I said, it's a traditional media. You don't have to put money. It's just tradition that we want to put money. But yeah, that's in terms of uh, it's not easy. It's really not easy um, because radio is predominantly ninety-five percent an ad-driven market. I'd say a hundred percent ad-driven market. If you don't get ads, you don't obviously make money. Simple as that. And uh, dialogue TV, they started off as an ad-driven market because they thought that they could actually, you know, try and get all the eyeballs to have terrestrial TV channels to watch them. They started off as an ad-driven market. They nearly shut down. That's why they went into subscription. That's why it's working for them. And they're really running based on the subscription. They don't really care if their ads are coming in or not. They really don't care. And I think last year they just made 400 million in ads, which is pittance for a TV station. 400 million is how much a TV station, a really top end TV station, should I be making about two months or three months? 400 million annually is really nothing. But subscription, yeah, that's where they're making their money. What's their subscription? Two thousand five hundred bucks or something? Two thousand five hundred bucks? Two thousand five hundred bucks? And now they've hit a million people, a million subscribers. So you do the math. There you go. That's how it is. Any other questions, guys? Who wants to get into the broadcast industry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to the right forum. <laughs> Is the situation changing in other countries as well, like English-speaking countries? Well, it's not. Not really. Because, for example, in the US and in the UK and all that stuff, right, it's different. Um, because they have identified certain things that they can actually merge with social media, and they're still doing it. You know? Now, for example, um, in the US, US actually um, has like a million radio spots, right? Because they're so huge. But they're owned by three parent networks. They're just three people who actually own all the radio stations in the US. One is the Clear Channel. Clear Channel is the one that actually owns uh, KISS in the US, the one that Ryan Seacrest is on, um, where Rick Dees was on before. Um, so they own some of the big, big channels, right? But what they're also trying to do is, for example, Ryan Seacrest's show is one of the most popular shows in the US, but it comes out only in LA. So what they're doing is they're actually beaming that show on so many other radio stations around the US at the same time. You know, So if Ryan obviously is on the show in the morning in LA, it'd be obviously the time differences in the US. They record the show, they package it, and they send it across via satellite to another station that will wake up like about maybe 10 hours or 6 hours later and Ryan Seacrest is there. You know? So, using personalities they can actually demand more money also in terms of their sponsors because their sponsors are different. They're very regional sponsors. The guys who decide to spend on Ryan Seacrest show in, in LA clearly would not be in Texas. It would be two different sponsors altogether. So they make more money with one product. So they are looking at so many different avenues of obviously, you know, um, escalating their revenue in a way, but you know, US is is they're like straight ahead of us because English is a third language in this country. You know, uh, so they don't really care. But again, when you decide to talk about it, it goes back to the amount of money that English radio station is actually bringing for the entirety of the radio industry. Any other questions, guys? Cool. Any other questions? Just one question. Yeah. First of all, I appreciate the talk you gave. It was wonderful talk. Thank you. I, I wish it was some more deep listening to you. No, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> The question is, uh, in Sri Lanka, do you see some initiatives where people are trying to integrate social media with terrestrial uh, radio and trying to do those important things? Do you see any initiatives coming on any science for uh, <coughs> I wish I can say that there are. Um, 
I think the furthest that the that that merge between terrestrial and digital is working uh, is that radio stations have web streams. You know, that makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> what does that do to you? That just that's just giving you another sort of avenue to listen to what is terrestrial. You know, so but they have to. You know, things have to be very innovative. They have to think out of the box. They have to know exactly how they are going to hit their target. Just because you broadcast the same thing um, that's on terrestrial on, on, on their web stream saying that, hey, listen, you can listen to us online. Listen, if I don't want to listen to you on radio, I'll just watch this new online. <laughs> right? well, does it even you know, answer the question there? That's the furthest that these guys have actually gone to. Uh, Since they say that there have been good results in other countries, why don't our people take the same route? It's just a matter of copying something more. The radio is like the like 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 the minor industry there. On that same question, we can talk about everything else in this country. <laughs> 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 why don't they talk about what's going on in the rest of the country and implement it here? You know, the thing is this. You know, it's it's very it's easy to say, it's easy to talk about, but when you are going to implement it, it's difficult. Again, the cost factor is quite high, right? It's one thing. And the other thing is the fact that it's very difficult to change the mind frame of people who've been sitting on top of radio stations for about good 10, 15 years. You know, it's very difficult. Because they've enjoyed the success of radio. You can't tell a guy who's enjoyed the success of radio for 15 years and say, listen, you're losing money, is it? So I'm not. Right? I have made all. I had made enough money already, so I will, you know, make more money in the next couple of months or whatever. But it's not going to be easy. I mean, I can tell you this because I am in this industry. I have been in this industry. I've sat on boards and I basically argued with board members. But they were older than me. <laughs> That's the problem. They had no grey hair than me at that point. So they were not very too much. And that's the case in most boards around the country. Start with the government. <laughs> Waiting to budge. Uh, one last question. Sure. Tell me the media ethics. Uh, no. You said earlier people have access to a lot of information these days, and sometimes because of that situation, and they decide who to believe and who not to believe, maybe, uh, and I trust credibility. Uh, so how do you see the media industry uh, handling that issue of uh, no trust that people have? Well, it's, very, it's a very good question, actually. I mean, I think we're actually going through a serious problem of media ethics right now. Um, purely because of the fact that Sri Lanka is not the only country that is actually having this issue right now. Uh, I think almost any country in the world, I, mean, I think one of the biggest countries is the US that is having massive issues with media ethics, right? Because being in the media industry, what happens is the fact that you really want to break that story before anybody else does, right? And you really don't care if you get your facts right or wrong, as long as you get one line of that particular story right, and then you get the entire country sort of talking about it and then you are hooked on to that particular station right till that story comes out. Now the other day I think a very good uh, uh, thing is where um, there was a leading newspaper that has quoted Kumar Sangakkara about his intent on being a president. Right? <laughs> uh, I know Kumar personally right? and then for the longest time he's told me that he absolutely hates politics. But <laughs> he hates politics, right? And I don't, unless he surprises me, right? I mean, I don't see him really coming on board. But there was really wrong of that newspaper to actually make that quote when he had talked off the account, off the record to a journalist of that newspaper, right? And he had just basically had a very friendly conversation saying, I don't, uh, I'm not going to agree or deny or whatever. And I'm not, I don't respond to gossip. And that's been printed. And he's actually a tweet saying I never gave a quote like that. Again, that boys are the media ethics, you know. Um, 
there are news channels that distort the fact, you know, and there are, see, for example, I think one of the biggest issues uh, we have with, 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 with most of the news that we see, um, if you realize it, there, there, a news conference or a press conference or whatever is actually patched up, you know, it breaks every three seconds, every four seconds, every five seconds, right? Again, it all depends on how close that politician is with that news agency and with that uh, particular news broadcaster. And then, I'm telling you, right, there are people who will basically give X 32 seconds. There are people who will give Y 29 seconds, right? It's calculated. It's calculated. Now what happens, of course, us as a viewer, when we actually see that news, we only see like bits and pieces of it. And by the end of it, we don't even know what the hell he said, right? And the facts are so distorted because the news agencies are telling you what you should watch. News agencies are telling you that this is what the politician said. Then the politician gets riled up and he gets on social media the next day and says, this is not what I said, this is what I said. What's the point when the news is already done and already people have made up their mind about what you said? So people now feel that you are trying to only cover up something because it was sort of brought out to light. So it's a very thin line that you need to actually follow in terms of media ethics. But thankfully as far as radio is concerned, most of the radio stations here are more focused on entertainment unless when it comes to news, so there's a different programming division, a different news division, they don't necessarily, you know, sort of interconnect. So news is handled separately in almost all the uh, media stations and the programming division is completely So they handle just the programming element of radio. Uh, but yeah, it's questionable really. Sometimes when you read something in the newspaper, you're questioning yourself, you don't even know, you now you know what to believe and what not to believe. And uh, it's, pretty sad in a situation like that. Any other questions, guys? <laughs>